Kirsty is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Is that my fruit salad? Well, not anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was Maddie's. Seriously? She's never eaten fruit or salad. <laughs> That's not true. Remember when I thought that plum was a chocolate ball? Maddie, will you tell your driver not to eat my food? Yes, and tell your lackey not to steal my Us magazine the second it arrives. Why don't you just get it delivered to your place, then? <laughs> Are you crazy? My owls would tear that thing apart. Would you guys stop it? If I wanted people squabbling over their needs, I would have had kids. <laughs> oh, that's right. Arlo? What's going on? You look down. Melissa blew me off for our date tonight. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. I know how much you were looking forward to that. Who's Melissa? <laughs> Melissa Winters. She's the daughter of those snobby professors who live on the 10th floor. Yeah, they're kind of opinionated about who she goes out with. Well, you know, sweetheart, sometimes people can get judgmental. They look at a guy in his late 20s still living with his mother. Dressing like a troubled vet? Uh, actually, it was you they were judging. Me? You're the weirdo. <laughs> Is what I imagine they were thinking. No, it was you. They were pretty clear about that. Something about your sleazy lifestyle. Sleazy lifestyle? They don't even know me. I would like to hear one example of me acting in an undignified manner. <laughs> Going down? Come on, it was New Year's Eve. It was Good Friday. <laughs> it was good, wasn't it? <laughs> but you really like her, huh? Okay, then this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to invite the Winters over to our house for dinner, and I am going to dazzle them with my completely unsleazy lifestyle. Yeah, well, we'll pitch in. Yeah, right on. I'm a sucker for young love. Guys, forget it. The only thing that impresses these people is brains and class. Well, then I'm going to show them that I've got brains and class coming out the pooper. Hey, Frank, how's it going? Great. I just checked out that new medical marijuana dispensary. <laughs> Herb your enthusiasm. <laughs> and I got a bag of these funny sunny gummies. You know, they gave me a free sample, and now I can see through my eyelids. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Try me. Okay, how many? A poppy. <laughs> oh, hey, I think we got trouble. I've just been doing a little research on the Winters. They're not just professors. They're both fellows. That's great. Gay guys love me. <laughs> not that kind of fellows. They're both big deal history professors at Columbia. Ooh, our cleaning lady is from Columbia. <laughs> I wonder if they know Soledad. I really think you should cancel this dinner. No, I can't. This is for Arlo. I have an idea. You said that the Winters are both history professors, right? Mm, yeah. So I'm going to stay up all night and watch the History Channel. <laughs> Good thinking. Eight years of higher education versus one night of TV. I know, right? I just saved three quarters of a million dollars. <laughs> Hey, did you guys know that Hitler never took off his jacket in public? I get that. You don't invade Austria in a tank top. Want some bacon and eggs? Sure. But I'll tell you who wouldn't. Hitler. He was a vegetarian. I may not want to know the answer to this, but why are you talking about Hitler? Because it's all that was on the History Channel last night. It was a marathon. <laughs> Hitler this, Hitler that. I get it. Hitler's the greatest guy that ever lived. You may want to never say that again. I had a feeling this History Channel thing wasn't going to work. So, 
I called a professor friend of mine. He'll be here at seven pretending to be your date. Just let him do all the talking. How do you have a professor friend? He's a friend with benefits. Oh, you sleep with him? Better. He's got Rangers tickets. Well, it sounds perfect. Yeah, and if these dinner guests happen to get you alone, I've got you covered. An earpiece? Yeah. I figured I could be in the kitchen on the internet feeding you information so you don't sound like someone who's never read a book. Hey, I'll have you know I've read Fifty Shades of Grey. Well, two shades. I got bored. Wow. Thelma, why are you dressed like that? Because my life isn't demeaning enough. Um, where did we get this globe and all these new books that don't have for dummies in the title? Your mother is going all out for you, Orlo. But if you want a good laugh, ask her to show you where Canada is. <laughs> Welcome to the bank's residence. Hi, Melissa. Hello. Daddy, mother, this is Arlo. Pleasure. No, there's no neck tattoo. I owe you a nickel. Oh, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I got caught up in the Times crossword puzzle, which I was doing in ink. Oh, it's lovely to meet you. I'm Madison Banks. Yes, we know your work. Oh, from the theater? No, from the elevator. Um, Maddie, this is Melissa. Melissa, this is my mother, Maddie. Pretty sure I've used up all my M's for the month. <laughs> we brought you a hostess gift. Oh, caramels. Yum, 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 yum. They're decorative soaps. Um, then I'll just have one. Oh, so where's Professor, what's his name? Daniker. Frank is picking him up now. If they ask you anything, just stall until I can get on the internet. Uh, Madison, I see you're a fan of the Impressionists. Oh, sure. You can't handle the truth! <laughs> I am not a crook! Impressionism. Impressionism. One ringy digging, two ringy digging. I was just kidding. Impressionism, the 19th century art form characterized by small yet visible brush strokes. <laughs> so who'd like champagne? That would be lovely. Yes. <laughs> champagne, Thelma. I heard you, Maddie. Maddie, don't you mean Miss Banks? I don't need to call the service again, do I? I'm so sorry, madam. Would you like your usual 240s of malt liquor and a straw? Well, that one is such a spitfire. But I tell you, after she's cleaned a room, you could eat off the floor. Show them, girl. Oh, no, none for me, thank you. I'm in the middle of a dissertation. Oh, yeah, I get that way, too, after taquitos. <laughs> you know, funny story. One time I was on a plane coming back from Cancun. Oh, a dissertation. <laughs> Kidding again. I know that a dissertation is a very long essay for your doctorate and not severe stomach cramping. <laughs> That must be my date, Professor Daniker. Cabot Daniker, the medieval literature scholar? Sure, let's go with that. I'm a big admirer. I'm told he speaks ten languages, that he's an expert dressage writer and an accomplished pianist. Madison, we had no idea you had friends in academia. No, he's American. <laughs> Late lover, the symposium ran long. <laughs> Danica's passed out drunk in the limo. How 
look, everyone. It's Cabot Daniker. You speak ten languages. Mm. Shalom. <laughs> Professor Daniker, I would love to bend your ear about your latest book. Oh, yes, my novel. It was a textbook. Well, yes, it was my novel uh, approach to a textbook. <laughs> so, Arlo, I understand you work in a donut shop. Oh, not anymore. I got fired. <laughs> oh, may I have another in a larger glass? <laughs> Well, um, he just quit that job to move on to better things. I bet Melissa and Arlo have tons of things in common. Really? She's pursuing an advanced degree in nanotechnology. <laughs> I'm sorry. You wouldn't understand. Yes. And nanotechnology. The manipulation of matter on an atomic and molecular scale. Why, I didn't take you for someone who's up on cutting-edge science? Yes, we were just discussing this at the Menses Club. <laughs> I think you meant Mensa. No, this was a room full of angry ladies. <laughs> but, Dedeker, I understand you're quite the pianist. Well, I've had no complaints. <laughs> He said, pianist. Oh. I was thinking it would be an honor to hear one of your original compositions. No, no, no. It's really time for dinner. Oh, what better way to start dinner than with a musical amuse-bouche? Please. The Professor Daniker I've heard so much about is anything but modest. standing over a donut fryer wearing a hairnet in the middle of summer. <laughs> Not helping. Madison, I do love your apartment. Would you mind giving me a tour? Not at all. Could you please excuse us? Hey, my mother and your mother seem to be hitting it off. No, when she gives that twisted smile, it's never good. You may never see your mother again. <laughs> Oh, thanks. That's not a sensitive thing with me. This is the master. And this is my very okay. favorite painting. Why don't we end this charade? You think you're fooling anyone in that prim little suit and your hair in a bun? I hope so. I know the slutty bad girl that's in there. And I like her. <laughs> Um, can I have my gum back? <laughs> what was that? A forbidden kiss from the Garden of Sapphic Delight. Uh, uh, a, I, I don't even know what that means. And B, you're married to a man. My life has been so constrained. I didn't go through this phase in college. They didn't do this sort of thing at Smith. <laughs> I'm very flattered, Veronica, but I don't... Maybe. Really... Our children brought us together for a reason. What are you talking about? I'm just saying... I could give my daughter my blessing about dating Arlo... with a little incentive. Are you blackmailing me? In a sexy way. <laughs> you bitch! Oh, dirty talk! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Well, that was a quick tour. Did you show Mrs. Winters everything? No, she didn't see anything. Just eat. Uh, Danica, I was thinking, why don't you come and be guest lecturer at my seminar next week? Mm. Guest lecturer? Sounds like someone's getting a little lazy. Patty, perhaps we should take a yoga class together. You know, work up a sweat, really stretch each other out. Uh, I don't really care for stretching. It's just a gateway to exercise. Sounds like you two really hit it off. Looking over the new schedule at the Met, Madison. A little too heavy on Puccini for my taste. Anything to excite you? Yes, Maddie. What excites you? <laughs> well, that's a that's a very interesting question about the opera at the Met. Well, I'll tell you who did like a good opera. Hitler. <laughs> I bet you didn't see that coming. <laughs> well, Wagner, I suppose. Well, him I can't speak for, but Hitler couldn't get enough of it. <laughs> Actually, he had to drop the opera bug because he suffered a partial hearing loss after a bomb went off in Wolf's Lair in 1944. <laughs> Fortunately, he survived. Oh, I dropped my napkin. No! I don't think it's going very well. It's actually going much better than I expected. What is wrong with you? I'm dying out here! What's so funny? My sleep! Hey, you can't leave me alone with these people. They asked me about dressage, and I told them it was Thousand Island. Are you eating my gummies? Yes, so what? You ate all my fruit salad. Your fruit salad doesn't cost $400. Oh, what kind of gummies cost $400? Oh. Why didn't you put your name oh, on it? Guys, come on. Do I have to separate you? Thelma, just take this dessert and take it out there. Why do I have to be the stupid maid, and he gets to be the... I speak ten languages, and still I have to drive out to Queens every night. She gets to live here. Yeah, with her. You think that's a picnic? Well, what is that supposed to mean? I'm lovely. as Veronica. I think we actually got away with it. I knew your parents would come around once they got to know Maddie. We're just lucky that they've seen worse. What, what does that mean? Uh, let's face it, your mother isn't exactly Princess Grace. She's a little, you know... What? Low rent. Oh, come on. She acts like somebody you'd see on Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. Okay, let me tell you something. My mother may be loud and over the top, and if there's a man that she wouldn't take home, I haven't met him yet. But she would do anything for me. And so would those two. They even put up with your snobby, tight-ass parents because they knew it meant something to me. Now, they may not have big, fancy degrees or degrees of any kind, <laughs> but they're good people. And I think this dinner is over. Thank God. Now, will you consider going back to that Yale architect? No, stop trying to control my life. I'll buy you a car. Done. <laughs> Laundry room, midnight. Stop it. Okay, maybe. What? That was a really good kiss. Sorry about Melissa, kid, but you deserve better. Maybe we didn't get the respect of Mr. and Mrs. Stick up their butt, but you sure got mine. But I'm high as a kite, so what do I know? Hey guys, I'm really sorry that I let you all pretend to be something that you're not just to impress those pompous phonies. Oh, let's not be too judgmental, Arlo. I believe it was Hitler who said, forgive and forget.